Welcome back. This morning, the Indian Space Research Organization launched the EOS-09 Earth Observation Satellite aboard the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, also called the PSLV C-61, from the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sriharikota. The mission experienced a failure due to an anomaly in the third stage of the rocket, resulting in the satellite not reaching its intended orbit. ISRO Chairman V. Narayanan confirmed that the first two stages of the rocket performed normally, but an issue was observed during the third stage, leading to the mission's failure. The organization has initiated a technical analysis to determine the exact cause of the anomaly. Good morning, friends. Today, we attempted a launch of PSLV C-61 vehicle. Uh, the vehicle is a four-stage vehicle. First two stages performed as expected. And uh, during the third stage, it's a solid motor system. Uh, they, we are seeing observation. Uh, the motor pressure, there was a fall in the chamber pressure of the motor case. And, we are, and the mission could not be accomplished. We are studying the entire performance. We shall come back at the earliest. Thank you. So this was a statement that was made by the ISRO chief. The EOS-09 satellite, also known as RISAT-1B, was designed to enhance India's Earth observation capabilities, providing high-resolution imaging in all weather conditions, day or night. This incident, in fact, marks a rare setback for ISRO, which has a strong track record of successful launches. ISRO says that it remains committed to analyzing the failure and implementing corrective measures for future missions. Take a look at what happened moments before ISRO scientists realized that fall in the chamber pressure caused the third stage hiccup. Third stage performance normal. गुणवत्ता कितनी सटीक है, आंकड़े कितने सटीक हैं? यान की ऊंचाई 326 किलोमीटर तथा सापेक्ष गति 5.6 किलोमीटर प्रति सेकंड. The outcome of the mission of PSLV C61 EOS09 will be communicated by ISRO through its social media channel in due course. So what went wrong? Is it a big uh, setback for ISRO? What's going to happen next? Let's talk about what this means for India's space exploration. No doubt this was a very big moment for India, the 101st mission for the country. And uh, people across the world had been waiting very eagerly in the country as well. People had woken up early in the morning because there has been a lot of interest on India's space exploration, especially over the last few years it has only built up. You heard the ISRO chief, there was a tinge of disappointment as he said that it has not been accomplished and there will be a review of what happened. To get a better understanding of the same, we have uh, Arup Das Gupta, former deputy director of ISRO, joining us on the broadcast. We also have Devdatta Mishra, former scientist, uh, ISRO and COO of Arisha Space, joining us on the broadcast. Thank you for joining us, uh, Mr. Arup Das Gupta. Uh, you know, there was a lot of disappointment, but we always know that ISRO learns its lessons only to bounce back much bigger on a better scale, doing much bigger things. How do you look at what has happened today and uh, what do you think happened? What went wrong? First of all, uh, space is extremely, um, you know, unforgiving, mm. even for the smallest of mistakes. Uh, there must have been some mistake that will come out in the, uh, the, the uh, analysis, which I'm sure is already ongoing. Uh, setbacks are very common, so there is nothing to be worried about. Uh, SLV, PSLV has been a fantastic launcher. Yes. Uh, this is the third failure, if you call it that way. Uh, the previous, the first test satellite uh, test launch failed. And then after that, we had the launch of the IRNSS replacement in which the nose cone did not separate. And now we have this one in which the third stage has not performed as um, as uh, expected, uh, fall in chamber pressure basically indicates that the uh, the rocket has malfunctioned. Beyond that, I cannot say uh, the real truth will come out from the um, the, uh, the report which is going to be uh, issued by ISRO uh, after they go through the entire telemetry and all the other data that they have. So I do not want to speculate on that, but I want to say that they set such setbacks happen and should be taken in a stride. Uh, in, uh, in any scientific endeavor, and that applies to space also, 
failures are the stepping stone to success. Absolutely, as it is, I'm sure, in life as well. And we've seen that with ISRO in particular. Uh, you know, whenever there has been any minor setback, uh, they have learned from their mistakes and they have done so much to make the country so proud. Uh, but, you know, we were having discussions since morning as well and there have been such divergent views on the PSLV because while some say that it continues to be the backbone of India's space exploration, some also say that there is a need for a complete overhaul. Yes, it's versatile. Yes, it's cost effective. But maybe it's time to look for a big change within ISRO because it has had its fair share of failures as well. How do you look at it? How do you analyze uh, the failures? Do you think it can be seen in terms of just numbers or is there more to the story? No, no, no. no. Don't, uh, the statement that the fair share of failures is not really correct. I think generally... No, we you know, we had a, uh, um, a, an expert joining us earlier in our panel. By fair share, he didn't mean that there have only been failures, but he said a comparison... Uh, with India's PSLV as compared to the other nations, he of course took the names of the United States and the European nations and he said that India had a, uh, you know, ha had a bigger rate of failure. And now it may be only marginally higher, but he said that there should be an overhaul, which is why I said there are very divergent views. There are also many who said that, you know, PSLV has been such a big part of uh, India's space exploration. It has been a really huge success so far. So it should not be seen with any criticism, which is why I asked you to weigh in on in for a better understanding for the common man on whether we should be concerned yeah. or is it something that ISRO is looking at? Uh, definitely PSLV is old technology, hmm. but then the thing is that there has been constant improvements going on. Okay. It, it, the PSLV first one and the PSLV this, which we lost has undergone several technological, uh, you know, uh, improvements. I mean, I can't go through all of that uh, in such a short time, but hmm. there has been improvement. But yes, I do admit that it is now a, a, an aging war horse, if I say. And definitely, ISRO is also looking at new launches. The NG, uh, the, the new generation launch vehicles, is very much on the drawing board and on the workshop tables. Definitely, we'll get a replacement, which will be far more modern, far more efficient, far more energy efficient. Okay. So yes, it is going on. And as I said, you learn from failures, and those mm. these learnings are going to the design of the next generation vehicles. Yes, I'm sure, and we're waiting for that. There are so many. Uh achievements to ISRO's credit and the entire country has backed them for every single one and it was really great to see the ISRO chief come out and say that it did not go as planned whereas in case of any success there are always other scientists who are part of the project who take the lead there which is a very good tradition that we've witnessed in ISRO every single time. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, you know help us understand this better. Thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast.